What's going on, everybody? Here with Greg Biggins, National Recruiting Analyst for 24-7 Sports. We're going to talk about Miami's recruiting class here in about mid-July, the way it ranks right now. about tw It's right right now at 21 in the country, fourth in the ACC. You know, things change all the time. But, Greg, we're, we're going to get into specifics uh, about the class, but maybe your general thoughts on, on Miami's class, where it's at right now, still months before the early signing period. But just your thoughts. You know, honestly, it's better than I thought. And that probably sounds weird. Um, you know, before we talked, I looked at their class and, uh, you know, like top 25, like you mentioned, you know, 21, but I, I like it, you know, overall, I think it's solid. And for me, I'm always a big fan of balance. And, you know, you see some classes that maybe overload one position, or I think with Miami, you know, it, it's really spread out. And, um, you know, I think Marquise Lightfoot, obviously the headliner right now, really good edge rusher. I mean, he's an elite, elite three and out day one guy. Um, I like Riley a lot as a running back, but you know, what's interesting, I was looking at Gabby's little report that he did kind of comparing last year to this year. It seemed like last year maybe had more star power and that gets a lot more buzz that gets the fans excited. But if you look at this year's class and kind of compare it um, to where it could be, and I, I, I think, I think they're fine. You know, again, nothing wrong with the top 25 class. Again, I, I like the elite athleticism. I like the Florida kids. Again, being a California guy, I'm like, dude, stack your class with local Florida boys. Those guys are the best football players in the country. So overall, I, I don't know the pulse of what the fans think as you do, but as an outsider looking at it as a whole, uh, I think they're fine. I think it's a good solid class with plenty of room to build and move up the rankings as we go along all the way up to December signing period. Greg, there's something you touched on with the balance. I want to get to that. But just as far as the Miami polls, look, Miami fans are a little concerned, a little up in arms about the number of three-star prospects, for example. You know, you're looking for those headliner type guys at the top that you mentioned, Lightfoot and Riley are two of those guys, you know, Chance Robinson, a local receiver, uh, people like, but but the three-star rank, any thoughts on that? It, essentially, is it too many? Are they is it you seem to think like everything's okay? I know, you know, at the time, uh, you know, fan, fans get worked up about it sometimes just your thoughts on maybe overall thinking of, of that and with where they're at with those kind of players essentially at this point yeah. in the so for me and i hope this doesn't sound like i'm trying to sugarcoat it there is the difference between a three and a four star is so minimal and i hate the term three star because for me i don't even look at three it's i just i go more like hey he's an 88 he's a 92 he's an 84 like i don't look at three four five as much so when you say someone's a three star um, there is such a radical discrepancy between an 80 and an 89. Those are both three stars, right? But if you're an 88, 89, for me, you're, that's the four-star bubble. If you're an 80, 81, um, you know, that's a guy who's, you know, not a lot of upside. Maybe he'll play in college, maybe outside, outside chance if he's, you know, everything hits right, that he's got some NFL potential. But if you're in that 87 to 89 range, for me, there is very, very little difference between an 87, 88 and a 90. Uh, you just you can't give four stars to everybody. But I, I see with Miami, yeah, they have some threes. These are high-end threes. These are guys in the 88, 89 range that are just on that border. And so we like those guys a lot as football players. I know fans say, oh, he's a three-star. Not all three stars are created, you know, the same. And I, again, I, I like the and I I get it from a fan standpoint. And I hear it from out, you know, out west, you know, UCLA is kind of the school. Why do we have all these three stars? We're three star university. That's what they kind of refer to themselves. But man, if you got good football players and your staff believes in them, and, and again, college football for me is all about development. I, I said it before with you. It's not about basketball where you can go one and done. Um, or even at high school football, man, you got to get guys in there and develop them. And if you trust that staff that they can come in there and develop these kids and they fit their system. Having a bunch of three stars, high end three stars for me is fine. If they're a bunch of 80, 80 ones, I'd be a little more worried about it, but I'm not worried about high end three stars at all. First off, with the three star and how you said, you know, you can't give everyone four stars. I like that there's a cutoff. I, I, I hope, you know, it's so easy to, you know, essentially extend the list, give people more four stars or more five stars. But I like when it's, you know, essentially a, a tough thing to get oh. as a prospect. So I like that. As far as the, I think the ratings, that was good explanation. Another thing I like to look at is where they rank in the position. Are they a top 10 at their respective position, top 20, you know, 30? I, I like looking at that too. It's just another way of looking at things other than just the star rankings, which obviously uh, has a lot of attention on that. Greg, you, you touched on balance. And I, I want to get to this. Uh, with the class, are, are there a few things that you look at a class that you find to be, you know, this is how you can address it, essentially a successful class? You touched on balance, maybe expand on that. Are, are there other things you like to look at if, if you just determine a successful class or not, essentially? 
So I, I had a really good, I'm not going to name a name, uh, name uh, of a school that he's from, but uh, I had a really good recruiting coordinator said, you know, need, speed, balance. Those are the three most important things, need, speed, and balance. And with that was need is obvious, right? Do, did we fill our biggest need? If our biggest need is a left tackle and you sign eight receivers, it, those could be eight stud receivers. You, you missed that on a huge need, right? So figure out what your biggest holes are and did you fill those needs? And then speed, also obvious. I think, and this was about 20 years ago when this coach said this to me about speed and how it's not just your receiver skill players. They wanted speed at every single spot. They wanted their nose guards to be able to be re- able to run. They wanted their right tackle, right guard to be able to run. Uh, so speed across the board was big. And this was kind of, again, the game where the game's going right now. Uh, you know, speed is at a premium, right? Everyone's throwing the ball all over the yard and and you have a lot of these freaky athletic edge rushers. And so speed has never been more prevalent. And like I said, balance. Um, I, I believe get a quarterback every year. It doesn't have to be a, an elite, elite quarterback, but I think you should try to sign one quarterback every year. You don't want to get into a, a situation where you have to sign two because you missed out on one because you signed two inevitably. One guy transfers out, right? So you kind of wasted a scholarship, although you like to see that competition. But, you know, give me that one four lineman on both sides of the ball, maybe a couple more on the defense because you have that edge rush or interior. Give me three linebackers. Um, you know, I, I, I want speed in the secondary. Um, so fill out your class. Um, with those three things, need, speed, balance. And for me, that's a good recruiting class, no matter how high it's rated. Yeah, that's that's excellent insight. And again, that's a good way of looking at things with the class. Another thing I like to look at, really just kind of identifying offensive skill talent, whether it's you know wide receiver, running back. I just really strongly believe in, in those guys as playmakers. A quarterback, you touched on one quarterback. Just your thoughts on Judd Anderson, um, not, not a highly rated guy out of Georgia, but just your thoughts on him. I know the Miami staff likes him and Coach Dawson, a uh, new offensive coordinator, he likes him. Just, just any thoughts on Judd and, and maybe what you see, what you've heard from him? about him yeah no i, I like him too uh, and it uh, d- doesn't matter if i like him if those guys like him that's way more per- important than what I, what I think again you know not rated as high as Jaden rashada um i don't know if that's a swear word to use but i know we're all we're excited about Jaden when he committed early but no man, I, I think he's a guy who's gonna you know de- he's a developmental guy i don't think he comes in and plays competes for playing time maybe right now but he's a guy i think you have to have in your program he's a guy you can develop he's gonna hopefully be there three or four years um, someone who I, I, I believe has the talent to start at a power five program. Um, again, not right now. And that's fine. I don't want a bunch of guys that need to play right now or they're going to transfer out. I think he's going to be a great teammate. He's coachable. You know, he shows some flashes and some physical tools and some traits, leadership, uh, very smart, high football IQ guy, which again, uh, complex college offense is now. I've heard uh, used to be, hey, we'll bring this guy in and we'll develop him. You don't have time, honestly, to develop a lot of guys who just maybe lack some basic football intelligence. So this is a kid who who understands the game, um, smart kid. And, you know, I think it's a solid pickup. Yeah, and you touched on, you know, who the staff really likes. I know they really like Ja'Cory Barney, a, re- a local guy who recently picked Nebraska. Uh, certainly disappointing from a Miami standpoint. I know Miami is really high on him and, and his potential there. Defensive line is a big talking point for Miami's recruiting class. You know, they they lose out on Justin Scott, Dylan Stewart, a five-star guy that's trending towards Ohio State at this current time. Your thoughts on, on maybe Miami's defensive line class, uh, the other guys that they're targeting, can they still essentially have a good recruiting class? You touched on they got Lightfoot. That's certainly a big one out of Chicago. Uh, but they're looking to have uh, high-profile guys at that position. Do you think they still can finish strong, finish with a good defensive line class? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and the way the portal works right now, it's it kind of minimizes your losses. And, I, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to sugarcoat things. You want to get, you know, the top guys. You would love to get Stewart and, and every elite guy. But the reality is <clears> – <throat> You can use the portal and Miami does it as well as anyone. And if you have a hole and you have a program like Miami, that's able to kind of, you know, offer maybe immediate playing time. You have a staff that has two to three, you know, pretty much full-time D line coaches that are very highly reputable. Um, And also, you know, you have a a strong NIL program that you can uh, use to to motivate players to come in. Um, You're going to be able to, to kind of cover your losses at the high school level. Um, uh, Lightfoot, I mentioned before, I mean, I don't know if we talked about that enough. I think that's huge. Again, this is a guy who can come in and he will, he will play um, from day one. I'm not saying he's going to start from day one. I don't know the depth chart as well as you do, but I'm saying he is a talented player that I think he's he's three and out. Um, and from here on out, again, recruiting is so fluid right now. How many every year, especially, you know, again, within, in the NIL world, do we see players commit and then maybe they waffle, take a trip, and then flip somewhere else? 
All right, we're in July right now. I think how these classes look, not just Miami, but overall, I think how these classes look right now in July versus how they're going to look in December during that early signing period are going to be radically different. And you know how aggressive Miami is and how aggressive Mario is. Now they're going to stay continue to recruit them heavily. So I think there's still there's still plenty of guys out there. Um, they're not going to give up on guys that they may be lost. And I think D line. I mean, again, maybe cut and save this. I'll, I'll look either really dumb or maybe a little bit smart if they fail to land anybody else other than Lightfoot in December. But I'm hoping they fill up that class with at least two or three guys that can play. Greg, don't worry about with what you said. I think you look a lot a bit smart. So uh, excellent, <laughs> excellent insight here. I appreciate it, man. I'll let you get going. I appreciate it. Always good talking to you.